Hello, everybody. I'm back once again with Constantinus from Parabellum Wargames. And we're going to be guys. having another little uh, spotlight uh, look at the world of conquest. So this week's spotlight is uh, about the Old Dominion, and it's focusing in on old faith and new faiths. Uh, and this is interesting because the, the Old Dominion um, is essentially a theocracy. Um, so for people who haven't come across the Old Dominion before, uh, can you tell us a bit about how the, the sort of structure, I suppose, of the, the I was going to say country, but it's not really a country anymore. It's, it's uh, something well, very different. It's a nation of sorts, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, in this spotlight, we explore exactly the evolution and the connection between the Old Dominion, which is the history of the mainland humanity in a way, hmm. and how that slowly evolved into new faiths in the form of the theism and deism of uh, the Hundred Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So exactly the old theocracy is what is at its core because it affected how, how the people, common people, the refugees of the Old Dominion that later formed the Hundred Kingdoms perceived uh, divinity Mm -hmm. as part of their everyday life. So it was a very essential part of humanity for centuries. In fact, for their peak, some would say, the peak of humanity was during the Old Dominion and the rule of Haslia. Uh, that is how the Old Dominion was formed, uh, by the patronage, let's say, mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. a fledgling god that slowly evolved, slowly became bigger, slowly began assimilating other smaller shards uh, or cooperating with bigger shards that you couldn't really kind of subsume in a way. Uh, so that was a very, that was the very core of the Old Dominion and humanity and its evolution. Like without Haslia and without the theocracy that he created, humanity would have been possibly a millennium or two behind in terms of history and evolution and technological advantage. Mm. So that cannot be shed from one day to the other and definitely not within the six short centuries since the fall to today and that is exactly what we explore in the spotlight how that core uh, core thing of what humanity is in the world of conquest still changed yes it changed mm. it evolved it became necessarily something different because there is the fall that pretty much almost wiped out humanity so there's obviously a grudge there <laughs> well yeah but so, the foundation and the belief that divinity is part of our life never really left and i think it's only natural if you think of a family that's been raised with a certain mentality they will pass mm -hmm. on that mentality now that will shift instead of worshiping haslia or the divinity or the theocracy because that is a very important distinction i think for the old yeah. dominion that the theocracy is religion but also politics and also military. <laughs> yeah. In the, think of the Roman senators becoming generals, and you get an idea how the priests were kind of senators and therefore also generals at some point. This changed throughout the uh, various phases of the Old Dominion history, but it was there. So what we want to outline in the spotlight is exactly the continuation of that strong connection between everyday life, religion, politics, and also militarism. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It comes across like it's being written as a, uh, a historical think piece by somebody within the Hundred Kingdoms. Is that the, the, as if somebody could go in and pick up this book from a library within the Hundred Kingdoms and see how theism has developed over time? Yes, it's also, uh, because our, we don't want our world to be black and white. Hmm. Uh, we decided that very early on. There are multiple interpretations of the same facts. Uh, I mean, the grandest example of that is actually within the Dwegum, which disagreed about what happened <laughs> when they broke yeah. uh, war out of his prison, and we also where that led. So we don't want to have the world in very clear black and white lines. We want to be realistic in the sense that different civilizations, different scholars even, 
uh, different kingdoms within the Hundred Kingdoms have a different approach to the same historical events. Yeah. So we try not to present uh, history as something set and specific. Of course, it is, and there yeah. are pieces, especially like in the uh, in our uh, core uh, in our core books, and that they are presented as this is how things happened. But especially with the spotlights, where the effort is exactly to show a dynamic and a live world with which is constantly evolving and there are different exactly approaches to the same things. That's where conflict comes from <laughs> but sure. anyway. Yeah. So we exactly want to show that this is one approach to those historical events. This is one interpretation of how the old dominion uh, worship of Haslia developed into theism and deism. Mm. Is it absolutely true? Of course, we don't want to deceive our audience. Well, sometimes we do, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, if we even though we present facts, we want to present them exactly as facts interpreted from a certain point of from view. From a certain, yeah, uh, a certain angle. I suppose that's the the old chestnut that uh, truth is the uh, uh, three edged sword: your your side, their side, and the truth. Uh, and true. and they're not always the the same thing. Um, interesting thing for me when I was reading through it was the um, the the sort of the slow development, like as the uh, the heretical sort of preachers mm -hmm. preaching ag against the old system, uh, the old theocracy, um, ended up having to fulfil the sort of the spaces that the priests had been ousted from simply because people want the the continuity there. Uh, which is a very human thing that we fear change on the whole. And even when change is coming, we want it to be sort of uh, dogmatic and, and brought in as, as simply as possible. It's easier just to to insert them into a role that already exists and just tweak it ever so slightly, which was uh, fascinating. I think that uh, that is what we were aiming for. I'm glad that you saw it like this because exactly we want – uh, as I said, we want our world to feel realistic hmm. and the sense of familiarity and comfort that a people that lived under a theocracy, even a decaying theocracy, because by the time the refugees uh, fled the Old Dominion and went to the bounty and what would later have flourished to be the Hundred Kingdoms, mm -hmm. uh, they were very angry. They were desperate people. They were prosecuted people in some cases exactly by the theocracy. So. Uh, there was certainly anger, but it's very hard to set the uh, the everyday approach to simple things like weddings. They were religious ceremonies, so they didn't feel complete without that aspect. Sure. So exactly the preachers that said words that appealed to them, but were also religious, would uh, would we feel naturally come to kind of fill that role. And of course, when you have what will later become the nobility of the Hundred Kingdoms, the leaders of those refugee waves, smaller or bigger, uh, they also wanted a ratification, a very early explanation of why they are in charge. Of course, this is not what would, this is only the very beginning of what would later become the collaboration, let's say, the coexistence yeah. between nobility and uh, church. But we think it makes sense. You, for someone to rule, there needs to be some kind of authority behind them. And in a theocracy, and to people raised in a theocracy, that authority could only come from something divine. Sure. It's it's a fascinating little spotlight. It's not the first time um, that it sort of tangentially looked at uh, the Old Dominion um, because they had the apostate, I'm going to say, Selazor. Yeah. Uh, uh, Celis or Celis or depending, uh, but both uh, are correct. Don't worry the, about the, it. <laughs> the hard C or not, uh, which was an interesting little view of one of these theocratic senators, essentially, and and how his choice of worship, um, while being correct and very traditional in some respects, possibly sort of hastened uh, the divisions within the old dominion as well, uh, exactly. which is worth worth checking out if people haven't looked at that spotlight. But there you have it. Uh, that's the old faiths and new uh, is the current spotlight this week over on Parabellum. Um, so you should check it out. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And we'll take a look at them and uh, try and get you answers. Thank you very much. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong.
Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.